Welcome, 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 and thank you for spending some of your time with us. My name is Tina Rosenquist, and this is Knowledge for Wellness. And this show is to enhance your overall understanding of information provided to you. Because when you know more, you are empowered to make better decisions, to enhance yourself and your loved ones for a better quality of life. And knowledge is power. And today's topic is with Twyla Braz, and she is the president of Citizens Council for Health Freedom. Twyla is also a registered nurse and a certified health nurse. She also provides daily radio commentary through the Health Freedom Minute, which can be heard on AM 1280. Welcome, Twyla. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am so pleased that you could join us. And this is a little different format that we're using today with you, but we just felt that this was so important to get this information out to our viewers. But you haven't been on Knowledge for Wellness as yet. No. Nope. And we'd love to have you back as well. <laughs> Thank you. But I'd really like for you to tell my viewers about yourself, your love and your passion, and why you went into this line of work. Sure. Well, Citizens Council for Health Freedom has been around for about 15 years. It's here in Minnesota, but it also works on national issues. And our mission is to support patient and doctor freedom, medical innovation, and the right of citizens to a confidential patient-doctor relationship. Okay. This is very important because without a confidential patient-doctor relationship, you as a patient will not be able to get what you need from the doctor. Mm -hmm. You will not be willing to talk to the doctor as, as you need to in mm -hmm. order to get what you need. So when we look at the importance of health freedom, mm -hmm. we look at the importance of you being able to choose the treatments that you want, being able to use your money how you wish to use it, mm -hmm. and being able to get the doctor and the, um, the kind of medication that you want and that you need. Right. This is all important because this is what our life is based on. Mm -hmm. You know, Do we have access to health care and go on to have quality lifetime or do we not? So freedom is really critical. Yeah. Um, I helped to co-found this organization when I was concerned that everyone was going to be moved into managed care organizations okay. at the national level and at the state level. And we have continued to work on the issues of managed care and freedom and privacy and all the elements that are needed for the individual to have control over their medical decisions. Yes, and you actually yourself went to Gulf Davis office and also became a nurse and you probably saw this from the actual hospital perspective right yes yes um, I graduated from Gustavus Adolphus oh, I can't even remember how long ago it was. <laughs> <laughs> and then worked in the emergency room mm -hmm. and worked with children and worked in the school system and I know the distinctives between one patient and the other and how critical it is that every patient have the right to choose what kind of treatments and doctor they have. Yeah, exactly. And we all think that we have that right. And thanks for you being our advocate, we even have it more. But the issue that I want to talk to you about also is that right now there's probably 60% of families out there that are not aware of the DNA taken from their babies, their newborns. And That's we're correct. here to actually tell our viewers <laughs> that when I talk to some of my friends that are nurses in the hospital, explaining to them that the DNA is then taken for research mm -hmm. and put into a data bank, they're like, no. And I said, yes, you really need to research this. Because when I was told it, I just felt very passionate. I did some research on it as well and found that it's not something that you're making up. Yeah. It's actually the fact. That's correct. Yes. So yes. It, Actually, I would say that there's even more than 60% that don't know. My guess is that most of your viewers, this is going to be very new, but it's so critical for every family to understand. The DNA of, of babies mm -hmm. at birth is being taken at the hospital and being sent directly to the health department for a testing program, which a lot of parents will probably agree with, which mm -hmm. is the newborn screening. Sure. However, at that point, mm -hmm. the state health departments around the country and here in Minnesota have decided that they are going to start keeping the DNA and using it for research. Mm -hmm. Now, in Minnesota, they made that decision back in 1997. So July 1st, 1997. Every child that has been born in Minnesota since July 1st, 1997 mm -hmm. has their DNA stored as state government property in the Minnesota Department of Health. Now, when we discovered this mm -hmm. in 2003, 
we told legislators that this was wrong. Mm -hmm. Parents have no idea, they weren't asked their consent, nothing. Mm -hmm. So um, we did get the law changed, but it's not changed as much as we would like it to be changed. But we did give the parents the right to take their child's DNA as well as their child's genetic test results mm -hmm. out of the health department to require it to be destroyed mm -hmm. or to ask for it back. Right, now that's called opting out. That's called opting out. You, it's not that you actually gave them permission to opt in, but now you, because they've already done this, you actually have to do a format to take your child out of that's the data correct. bank. That that's, is amazing. That's right. So it is presumed to be state government property unless parents know what's happening and then have to take steps to protect their child into the future. Because as you know, every child becomes an adult. Mm -hmm. And if this program continues, it means that the government will own the DNA of every citizen on into the future. And once it becomes government property, the legislature can do anything that they want with it. Mm -hmm. They can analyze it. They can use it for law enforcement purposes. They can share it as they have been. Mm -hmm. They can uh, conduct analyses. They can do genetic profiles of every citizen. Well, we have no idea what the potential is, mm -hmm. but that is what is uh, our fear is going forward. But regardless of what they may or may not do with it, the fact of the matter is that we all own our own DNA. Yes. The government should not own our DNA, but yet that's what they're doing here in Minnesota. So your viewers need to know that they can go to a website. We have a special website mm -hmm. where they can um, get a form and they simply sign the form and they send it in to the department. Okay. And then the department is required to notify them that they have destroyed the DNA and the test results. Um, so they yes. can go to itsmydna.org, okay. www.itsmydna.org. Okay, and I want to back up a little bit because I want to tell our viewers that it was originally started to help, you know, the futuristic, like if people actually had a heart condition, they could go back and look at some of the DNA as well. So because of that actually establishment at the beginning of it, um, then they kind of took it a step further and then they started to put it into um, actually keeping it on file. Well, the the uh, testing, the newborn screening, used to be called the PKU test. And okay. a lot of moms out there are going to know what I'm talking about. Yes. Because the PKU, if a child had PKU, they could easily be mentally retarded mm -hmm. um, very shortly after birth if they didn't have a special diet. Right. Right. So, but then at that point, um, they didn't find very many children with PKU, and it was an expensive government program. And so when legislators were deciding to get rid of that program, mm -hmm. then the states came and said, well, let's start testing them children at birth for six sickle cell. Oh. And then they came up with another condition and another condition and another condition. And gradually it grew until here in Minnesota, we have 54 conditions that children are tested for at birth. Oh. Now, the, um, the legislators were asked, um, I'm sorry, the health department was asked during testimony at one point, mm -hmm. would the health department ever get to the point where they would do a full genomic scan of every child's DNA at birth and mm -hmm. then have just numbers and letters that were just connected to the individual's name. And the health department said, well, that would require us to keep a lot of data and that's not possible for, you know, at least 10 or 15 years. Mm -hmm. But he didn't say it couldn't happen. Oh. He just said it wasn't possible for 10, 15 years. So the real possibility here is that they would be doing a complete genomic scan. So you, you know, as you said, it started with something called PKU. Right. And that was the testing. And that was in 1965. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, push forward 25 years and they decided that the blood itself that they were conducting this testing on mm -hmm. was valuable. Yes. And could be used for research both inside the government, inside the health department, and outside by others. And mm -hmm. so here in Minnesota, you can see the list of research projects that they're doing. That was something that we forced them to do was to put that list. Oh, okay. And you can see that most of it doesn't have any parents' consent. Mm -hmm. So there are, there, are, there are these research projects happening inside the department and that other companies are doing using our children's DNA, all without the knowledge or consent of the parents. That is amazing. And the whole idea that we actually aren't even aware of it. Right. You know, and that's why I wanted to bring you on Knowledge for Wellness to educate my viewers more so that they can connect with you because you are our advocate. People you know, as me, I don't get involved with a lot of this. And the majority of my viewers are so busy just making ends meet, mm -hmm. you know, working and raising your children and trying to do all this that you being our advocate to make others aware of this. 
health department has not wanted to tell parents. Mm -hmm. They have they have said if they tell parents, then the parents might decide not to do the newborn screening. Well, that's right. absolutely incorrect. Mm -hmm. But so they have not told the hospitals that the parents have these rights of opting out of the program entirely or of opting out of having the the information stored. They have not told them this. However, um, um, it's really important for people to understand that the birth time, if there is a mom out there and, the, and a dad, they know this, the mm -hmm. birth time is a very frenetic time. It's a very fuzzy time. There's so much happening. They're exhausted. They're excited. So we have felt that the health department has really exploited the birthing situation yes. and taken parents who are at a very vulnerable, busy time, mm -hmm. and they take it. And the parents are none the wiser. And um, you know, it's really an exploitation. They couldn't do it to an adult. They couldn't come and take your DNA without asking for your consent, but they're doing it to ev every child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're so worried, you know, during the birth, and you've already gone through these classes and the excitement and everything about having that child, and you want to do the best for that child. And you think when the nurse was coming and, you know, just testing your baby with its blood, oh, that's, you know, protocol. Right. Everything's fine. Everything's good. And now to be made aware of this is amazing. Yeah. And you're, you're, I just thought of this, that we never actually said this, because I can imagine that your listeners are wondering, well, where does this come? Mm -hmm. This happens when they prick the bottom of the baby's heel. Okay. And then they put it on a special filter paper. The hospital does nothing with that filter paper except send it directly to the state of Minnesota. Oh. So, so I have had one <laughs> parent who came out of the bathroom. She had tried to guard her baby every moment. And we mm -hmm. have a special sign to put on the bassinet and on the door which says, do not take my baby's blood without asking my permission. Okay. So parents mm -hmm. can use that sign. But this one parent tried to guard her baby every second, but she went to the bathroom. Oh. And she heard her baby cry. Mm -hmm. And she came out and she said, what are you doing? <gasps> And so then she actually took the filter paper away from the lab tech and said, no, you're not doing that. Wow. <laughs> that is an amazing story. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But that's what it takes. It mm -hmm. takes because um, there's, there's a new staff every eight hours. Mm -hmm. There's a lab staff. There's the nursing staff. You have to protect your baby if you don't want it to happen. Right. And I understand that this happens within 24 hours after birth. 24 to 36. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. yeah.